Hello and welcome back to David Crying Like a Baby. Why don't you people love me? Wah wah. This chart has been the bane of my existence for the past four weeks. Now for those of you who don't know, every YouTube video on this website comes with a chart that shows how many views the video gets over a period of time. Now it can get very technical, but to sum it up, big line good, small line bad. And for reasons I can't fully deduce at this moment in time, my past few videos have been following a pattern of big line, small line, big line, small line, big line, and then two small lines in a row, which that can can't be a good sign. And for reasons I can't fully describe and mostly just because of vibes, I'm gonna assume that this video is also gonna be a small line one. What does this mean for me? It means that my very short-lived YouTube career is probably coming to an end. We had a good run. Listen, I am very grateful that I even made it this far. And every view has meaning to me. And you may be thinking to yourself, hey, maybe those videos did bad because they sucked. And you know what? That's a fair point. But the fact remains, when you've been doing a craft for so long, years with no success, and then suddenly it is working and then just as suddenly it seems like it has stopped working that does something to you like something you've wanted for so long you finally get it and then you realize wait did i just peak and then it seems like it's only downhill from here you're not really sure that it's downhill from here it could change direction but i mean it feels like it is it causes a lot of confusing emotions and this type of thing happens to artists all the time so what's it like to put so much time and effort into some art piece or some other venture put it all on the line and then immediately fail to live up to your own former glory. Let's discuss. Going viral is probably like the best thing ever, but in addition, it is probably also the worst thing ever. Like for me, I sometimes worry when a video of mine does like too well which i know that's a good thing but i'm worried about the implication because now it has been chosen to be the representation of my work as a whole I think whenever you find like a new youtuber or you find like a new musician you usually go to their most viewed video or their most listened to song first to get a general feel for them so when a new video of mine becomes the most popular out of all of them i worry you know is this good enough a representation of me like was that video even really that good because if it wasn't then no i don't want it to be a representation of me as a whole but if it was i worry that am i ever going to be able to live up to this again it's the struggle of being universally beloved for one thing knowing that you will likely never be able to achieve such success ever again now what does that look like in practice i have two ideas that we can use for case studies You know, One Hit Wonders have always fascinated me because they've actually been able to achieve something incredible. With one song, they have defined the sound of a year or even possibly a whole decade they have actually made the song of the summer. Isn't that, that's crazy, right? They gain instant success overnight and then poof, they are gone just as quickly. Well, in reality, they're not actually gone, but we kind of just pretend that they are, we all move on. They could make a hundred songs after the one and they could all be objectively better, but they will never gain the notoriety and success of the first. The 99% of us who are on this side of a one hit wonder, we laugh about it and then we move on and then we read it in like a Buzzfeed article 10 years later as if Buzzfeed is still a thing. Is that a thing? But for the one per the percent of the percent of people who have actually made one hit wonders, what does it do to them to know that they will forever be known for doing one thing, one time, and that's it? Well, this is what Sean Nelson, singer of the one hit wonder band Harvey Danger, had to say about it. Imagine if you told a joke at a party when you were 20, and then every party you ever went to for the rest of your life, the only thing anyone wanted to hear you say, and the only reason you were invited, is because they want you to tell that joke again. It's not quite as funny, <laughs> it's not quite as thrilling, but there are way worse things and you feel like a total fool for complaining. It's just a particular little sting in the tail. He's right. I can imagine that it is very annoying to kind of live your life in the shadow of your own success. Like, for example, think Rick Astley. Now, I'm not saying the man doesn't have a good voice and make good music and have an impressive discography. I'm not trying to say that at all. I'm just saying, for most people living in the internet age, you hear the name Rick Astley, you think of one thing. A song that I can't play here because I'd like to be paid this month. But at the same time, though, you feel like you don't have the right to complain about it. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> my video did too well. Woe is me. Like, I don't want to be that guy. So I'll just keep it to myself, but I'll still feel it. Because you know what's worse than being a one hit wonder? Being a no hit wonder, which as it turns out is most people. I can't imagine what it's like to be in constant composition with your younger self, deep down knowing you will always lose. That can't be fun. But hey, forget those losers, because there is another group of people who have a far greater impact on culture and society who also suffer the same fate. It's a tragedy, really. 
a meme is probably really fun for about 15 minutes and then very annoying for the next 10 years. Because at the end of the day, you will be forever known for one thing, and a lot of the times, it's a very stupid thing. This is Silvia Bottini. Now, if you feel you don't recognize her, you may know her better by her professional name, First World Problems Meme. Now, Silvia was working as an actress when this photo was taken to be used on a stock photo website, and then years later, this photo was used for a most unconventional and unfortunately hilarious purpose. And in an interview, she talked about how she actually took issue with this meme for a time because she had been working her whole life to build up an acting career and her most famous work was being known as i don't know crying over a lack of oat milk that could fit for this for that meme right yeah and that must be a very annoying experience for her because she likely has much more impressive work than this work that she's far more proud of doesn't matter this is all she will ever be that's all she's known for another thing there's no way to recreate this kind of buzz it can't be done because really you never deserved that much attention in the first place actually i take it back you never had that kind of attention in the first place because the buzz was never about you it was about the joke like do you remember the great vine to youtube pipeline of 2017 when many viners tried to make the perilous journey from platform to platform and most died trying because people never really loved them they loved the handful of jokes they kept recycling for every six second video they made in summary your joke was famous not you and there is nothing you can do to change that Yeah, I didn't actually leave, so I don't- I, I'm gonna sit back down now. When something goes wrong in our lives, or at least just not the way we wanted it to, we often look for a reason. Something we can point at and then push all the blame on and maybe fix later, but mostly it's just so I know what to be mad at. And it's no different when it comes to this. I made great art and you people loved me. Now that's gone. How do I fix this? Where did you go? But the truth is, there's nothing you can do to fix this. That whole thing of people liking you and giving you attention, you don't have control over that. You never did. So it sucks, but then you're left thinking, you know, where do I go from here? I'll tell you where we go. We segue into the next part of the video where we feel better about ourselves now. Where do you find your validation? because it really shouldn't be dependent on the success of your work. Easier said than done, but it's the truth. I used to feel that once I made it on YouTube, I would be fully satisfied. People would think I was funny and they would give me attention and love and praise and I'd have family and friends and we'd all high five at the end of the movie. Like it would be great. I don't need counseling. This will fix me. My life would be smooth sailing after I finally accomplished that goal. Um. Did that prove true? Well, I still feel that I'm bad at forming close bonds with people. I'm not doing great in all of my classes this semester, and this morning I had a pound of ground beef for breakfast. So I wouldn't say my life is going extraordinarily well. You can't totally depend on how people respond to your work. You have to know who you are because you are an artist. And let's not kid ourselves, we create with the hope of being seen and adored. I, that's normal, but that's not the main reason why. The reason is because we have an idea that won't leave us alone until we bring it into fruition. And that's what motivates most of what we do. Also, I'd like to take a second and acknowledge, I think it's a little pretentious that I consider myself an artist. I make YouTube videos and in a, a, a unclothed mattress. I don't know that I qualify for this category, but I'm gonna insert myself in until somebody tells me to get out. And also another thing to consider, especially with one hit wonders, um, money. Like, could you imagine having complete financial freedom because you made one song 30 years ago? Well, this is what Chumbawamba lead singer Dunstan Bruce had to say about the aftermath of their hit song, Tub Thumping. It's really funny that only 70% of the words in that sentence actually sound real. When it was obvious that we weren't gonna have another massive hit, we weren't that upset. We made enough money to be able to continue doing what we wanted to do. So creatively, it opened up loads of doors. And that is an interesting take that I saw more than once in researching this video. The idea that a real artist doesn't need commercial success, that's not a necessity. Really, all you need to do is to make your art and to be passionate about it. Author Elizabeth Gilbert in her TED Talk described this concept as as home for the artist because if they fail that shies them away from ever making another piece of work but if they succeed it also overwhelms them and that they fear they'll never be able to live up to their own hype in either scenario they are pushed farther away from home that is making things and her whole argument was that somehow they needed to find their way back so think of it like this so you, for most of your life you live out your existence here in the middle of the chain of human experience where everything is normal and reassuring and regular but failure catapults you abruptly way out over here into the blinding darkness of disappointment. 
Success catapults you just as abruptly, but just as far, way out over here, into the equally blinding glare of fame and recognition and praise. And there's a real equal danger in both cases of getting lost out there in the hinterlands of the psyche. But in both cases, it turns out that there is also the same remedy for self-restoration, and that is that you have got to find your way back home again, as swiftly and smoothly as you can. For me, going home meant returning to the work of writing because writing was my home, because I loved writing more than I hated failing at writing, which is to say that I loved writing more than I loved my own ego. And I can relate to this myself, kind of.、Uh, I've been really busy these past few weeks because of school, so that's why I haven't been able to make as many videos as I've wanted to.、Um, side. Note: If you're thinking about becoming an engineering student, don't, don't do that. That's so stupid. But with that being said, I've missed this sort of. No, yeah, I, I think I have. I've really missed this. Really missed this? I think so. Do I miss this? I think I missed this. I like this. Of course, I won't lie. I, I missed the part of waking up in the morning and checking my YouTube stats and seeing that everybody loves me. Yay! I'm a hypocrite. But I also really enjoy the process of making it, like setting up the lights and writing a script and filming this and then editing it. Editing is really fun. And so, do I do this 100% for the artistic integrity and because I just love making pieces and nothing else? No, I'm lying. I want this video. Please watch it again if you have time. Like, yes. I want the things I make to succeed, and I feel bad when they don't. Is that a crime? The whole premise of this video is that I'm upset when they do when that doesn't happen. But there is an undeniable joy from this process that has nothing to do with graphs and numbers and statistics. It is sometimes just really fun to have a good idea in your head that won't leave you alone until you birth it into reality. So, in summary. I do hope this video does well. I don't think it will, but I hope it does. To be honest, if it doesn't, I'll probably have to cut back on making videos because, again, engineering student, that's don't do that to yourself. But in any case, I am glad that this video exists. It's done now, and it can be enjoyed by anybody in the world at any time. And I can always be proud that I made something. I created. I am an artist. So,、uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.